Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. You're about to take a deep dive into one of the biggest true crime cases in the universe, or at least on our part of the planet. From the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. The Koberger family, like many others, lived what seemed to be an ordinary life in a small town in Pennsylvania. Marianne and Michael Koberger were known as decent, hardworking people in their community, with three children whom they loved and cared for deeply. But in 2023, their lives were upended in ways they could never have imagined. Their son Brian, a man they had raised with the hopes of him achieving great things, was arrested and charged with a crime so heinous it left not just the small town they lived in but the entire nation in a state of shock. In this small town, the Kobergers had built a quiet life. Michael Koberger worked as a maintenance worker, a job that kept him out of the limelight and earned him the reputation of being a hard-working, honest man. He kept to himself mostly, and those who knew him described him as unassuming, a man of few words. In contrast, Marianne was more vocal, active in her community as a paraprofessional working with children with special needs. Marianne was known for her compassion and strong opinions, frequently writing letters to the local paper, advocating for peace, justice, and empathy, in a world that often seemed short on these qualities. Marianne's work was a reflection of her values. She believed deeply in the goodness of people, in the importance of compassion, and in the need to be kind and understanding to one another. Her letters to the editor often decried acts of violence, expressing a desire for a more peaceful world. She fought for those who couldn't fight for themselves, especially the children she worked with every day. She was the kind of person who friends and neighbors admired, someone they saw as a pillar of goodness in their community. But when Brian was arrested, those same people couldn't help but wonder, how could someone like Marianne, who spent her life advocating for peace, have raised a son now accused of committing acts of unspeakable violence? Michael, on the other hand, was quieter, a man who worked hard to provide for his family. While Marianne was vocal about her beliefs, Michael preferred to stay in the background, content to live his life away from public scrutiny. But in the days leading up to Brian's arrest, Michael found himself thrust into the spotlight in a way he never anticipated. In December 2022, Michael and Brian embarked on a cross-country road trip, driving from Washington State, where Brian was attending school, back to their home in Pennsylvania. The timing of the trip raised many questions. Had Brian planned this trip, knowing what was coming? And what did Michael know, if anything, during those long hours they spent together in the car? The trip became a focal point of the media's attention. As more details emerged, people speculated about whether Michael had any inkling that his son might have been involved in something terrible. Did Brian confide in him during those quiet moments on the open road? Did Michael ever suspect that his son was capable of committing the acts he was later accused of? The media, along with the public, wanted answers. And in the absence of clear information, speculation ran wild. In the aftermath of Brian's arrest, friends and neighbors of the Koberger family struggled to reconcile the people they knew with the news that was now dominating the headlines. Marianne, the kind-hearted advocate for children, now found herself in a position no mother ever expects to be in, trying to come to terms with the idea that her son might be guilty of something so terrible. Michael, the quiet, hardworking father, suddenly became a figure of public interest, his every move scrutinized by a world hungry for answers, and Brian's siblings, Amanda and Melissa, found themselves caught in the storm as well. Amanda Koberger, Brian's sister, had followed a path similar to their mother's, She had dedicated her life to helping others, working as a mental health therapist. But now, the very skills she used to help others navigate their personal crises were being called into question. How could someone trained to understand and treat mental health issues not have seen the signs in her own brother? 
How could she, someone so educated in human behavior, have been unaware of the darkness that may have been festering within her own family? The scrutiny Amanda faced was intense. And yet, she remained largely silent, trying to protect her family from the whirlwind surrounding them. Friends of the Koberger family expressed shock and disbelief at the news of Brian's arrest. Some described him as an intelligent, albeit quiet young man with a bright future ahead of him. He was, after all, pursuing a Ph.D. in criminology, a field that required dedication, intellect, and a deep understanding of the human mind. But others pointed to changes in Brian's behavior over the years, subtle shifts that, in hindsight, seemed to indicate that something was wrong. He had been open about his struggles with mental health, describing episodes of anxiety and depression. But no one could have anticipated what those struggles might lead to. As the investigation into Brian's alleged crimes unfolded, it became clear that the Koberger family's lives would never be the same. The media camped outside their home, reporters asking questions they didn't have the answers to. How did a family that seemed so ordinary, so dedicated to doing good in the world, end up at the center of one of the most shocking criminal cases in recent memory? The arrest of Brian Koberger raised questions not just about his actions, but about his family as well. Could they have known something? Were there warning signs that they missed or ignored? Public opinion was divided. Some believed that the Kobergers were victims in their own right, parents who had raised a child only to watch him become someone they no longer recognized. Others, however, saw them as complicit, either through their silence or their inability to see what was right in front of them. For Marianne, the allegations against her son were a bitter pill to swallow. Here was a woman who had spent her life advocating for kindness and compassion, now facing the possibility that her own son had committed acts of horrific cruelty. How does a mother reconcile that? How does she come to terms with the idea that the child she raised, the child she loved, could be capable of such things? The Koberger family dynamic, once private and unknown to the world, became the subject of intense public interest. Brian was not an only child. He grew up with siblings, each of whom had their own paths in life. Yet, as the oldest son, Brian had always been seen as the one with the most potential, the one who would go on to do great things. His family had high hopes for him, and in many ways, he fulfilled those expectations. He excelled academically, pursuing higher education and immersing himself in the study of criminology. But somewhere along the way, something changed. In the months leading up to his arrest, Brian's behavior reportedly became more erratic. He seemed distant disconnected from the people around him. He had always been introverted, but now those who knew him described a man who was increasingly isolated, struggling to maintain relationships or make connections. His academic pursuits, once a source of pride, now seemed like a veneer, something to hide behind as the darkness inside him grew. The Kobergers, particularly Marianne and Michael, were left to grapple with the reality of who their son had allegedly become. Their silence in the face of the media storm was telling. They did not defend him publicly, nor did they condemn him. Instead, they issued a statement through their attorney asking for privacy and expressing their shock at the allegations. But silence can speak volumes, and in the court of public opinion, their lack of a public stance led to even more speculation. The road trip that Michael and Brian took together in December 2022 became a focal point for investigators and the media alike. What did Michael know during those long hours they spent driving across the country? Was there a moment when he looked at his son and saw something different in his eyes? Or was he, like so many parents, simply unaware of what was happening beneath the surface? The truth of that trip may never be fully known, but it remains a key piece of the puzzle in understanding the Koberger family's role in this unfolding drama. As the case against Brian moves forward, the Kobergers will continue to face the harsh reality of their new lives. The world will never again see them as the quiet, hardworking family from Pennsylvania. Instead, they will forever be linked to the name Brian Koberger and the crimes he has been accused of committing. Marianne, with her history of advocacy and compassion, will have to reconcile the image of herself as a champion for peace with the knowledge that her son may have caused unimaginable pain. Michael, the quiet, unassuming father, will carry the weight of those unanswered questions. 
What did he know, and when did he know it? For the Koberger family, life as they knew it is over. The courts will determine Brian's fate, but for Marianne, Michael, and their children, the repercussions of his alleged actions will reverberate for years to come. Whether they were aware of Brian's struggles or completely blindsided by the allegations, their lives will never be the same. As the case continues to unfold, the world will remain captivated by this tragic story. A story of a family torn apart by allegations of violence and a son whose actions have cast a long shadow over the lives of those who raised him. The truth, as it so often does, lies somewhere in the murky space between what is known and what is speculated. For the Kobergers, that space is where they now live, waiting for answers that may never fully come. In a world where the darkest secrets lie just beneath the surface. So they said it was an accident, but the evidence says otherwise. Where hidden killers roam unnoticed in the shadows. Well, I think you would definitely be looking at a, a blend of toxic very bad narcissistic personality traits, and they will be vengeful and possibly resort to violence. Join Tony Bruschi as he uncovers the truth behind the most chilling cases. They said it was an accident, but the evidence clearly says otherwise. Each episode, we dig deep into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable. To your point on narcissism, he thinks in his own mind how witty he is, yeah. but he lost that jury. I, I was I was done with him in two minutes. From unsolved mysteries to infamous crimes. Geez, you've just talked about how you've taught yourself how to do everything under the sun. I bet you did a YouTube video, how to best kill somebody with a knife. Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi takes you where few dare to go. How does someone with such a dark secret go unnoticed? for so long with multiple new episodes every single day we're not just telling stories we're seeking justice listen now on apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts just search for hidden killers with tony brewski